In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. All right, this morning the chaplain's report comes from the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, 8 through 12. And we'll go ahead and read in, read into that. But first I do want to, uh, for those of you who may have forgotten where we were in the book, because we have been going through this series. So what happened is the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, has had his dream interpreted by Daniel, and because of that he set up Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he has set them up as governors, essentially over his governors. These are people that are now highly favored in his sight. They have a very prestigious job. And because of that, the king has favored them. And it's causing some problems within the community there. And we're going to see that uh, evidenced out in, in the scripture that we're reading. So the king has also... Since then, some time has passed. We don't know where Daniel is in this particular chapter. He's not really mentioned. But all of the other governors and magicians and people that are of authority in this kingdom, the king has sent out a decree, and he has made this large golden image. And he says, okay, when the music starts playing, everybody needs to go down and fall on their face and worship this golden image that I've made. As you can see, that's a pretty clear violation of the law of Moses. Violates one of the Ten Commandments. And you do not worship a graven image. And because of this, and because these young men that are Jews living in Babylon understand this, when the music plays and everybody else is sitting there worshiping, they don't. And we're going to see how that plays out here in this verse in, in Daniel. There we go. Okay, I almost pulled up the wrong one. There we go. Uh, Daniel 3, 8 through 12. For this reason, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought charges against the Jews. They have responded and said to Nebuchadnezzar the king, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made the decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, is to fall down and worship the golden image. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. This uh, certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the providence of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have disregarded you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. And there's a couple things that I want you to notice about that. First of all, they're correct. I mean, you look at, at what has happened. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have clearly opted to not obey the king's command. The king gave a command. They said, sorry, God's law is more important than, than your law, and they have decided not to do it. They weren't making a big fuss about it. That's just when the worship, the time to go down and worship the image came, they didn't. And notice that it wasn't the king that saw this. It was the Chaldeans that pointed this out. Now, why would the Chaldeans go and tattle, as it were, on these Jewish men that do not worship the image. It's because they were jealous. That's really what it all boils down to. These are the Chaldeans that could not interpret the king's dream. And because of that, the king was enraged and threatened to kill all of them. And yet, despite not being able to themselves, because their gods are not real gods, and because of that have no power, because of that, and Daniel came in and interpreted the dream, and these guys were elevated and promoted because of that, these guys are jealous of the position that the Jews have. They're jealous that the Jewish men that are sitting there in their midst have this supernatural power and this God that they worship that they don't. See, they'll kiss the king's rear end and go along to get along and do whatever he says. The Jews don't. They serve a living God whose authority is higher than any man, even somebody like Nebuchadnezzar, who ruled a large portion of the known world at the time doesn't matter to them, they still had a determination in their heart to obey God's law. 
And this is a sentiment that we also need to reflect that even when powerful men tell us to do something, if it violates God's law, we have a higher loyalty to a greater king. But then, because they did disobey, the Chaldeans saw an opportunity to undermine them and sort of take over their position and have them out of the way. They did it out of no other reason than envy and spite. They did not want these guys in that position of influence, and because of that, they went to the king to go tattle on him so that they could remove the problem. And this is really a lesson that I think we can apply to our own lives as well. Because as Christian individuals, there are always going to be people that are envious of us, there are always going to be people that seek to undermine us, and there are always going to be people that seek to take advantage of the fact that we live by a moral code that they don't. That's always going to be the case. It's the case all throughout the scripture, and it's the case with us as well. There are going to be certain people that because they know we will not take advantage of others, because they know that Christians are not going to be people that just go along with the crowd to get along, they're going to try to take advantage of that, and they're going to try to use it to undermine us and to hurt us. It's just the way the world works, and it's not fair, and it's not right, but that's that's the way the world operates. And the scripture tells us many, many times that that is how the world operates, and we are to be obedient anyway. Because the, there are always going to be a group of Chaldeans that seek to bring us down. That's just human nature. And there are always going to be people that are envious of us and our beliefs and our conviction. You know, it kind of, to me, sounds like being a Christian baker or a florist or a county clerk that because we believe in something greater than ourselves and because we believe in a higher authority, a higher power, that we have to answer to, that there are going to be people that just out of nothing but pure spite want to see us brought down, want to see us suffer because we have beliefs that we stick to and we have a morality and a moral code that we live by. Even if it's, it's not about the cake, it's not about the flowers themselves and they don't really want it, they want to see people brought down. The whole Chick-fil-A thing is a perfect example of that. There are going to be people in this world that want to persecute you just because you're a Christian. But the Bible also tells us to endure and to be faithful and to remember that we serve a greater king that is far stronger than any lawsuit they can bring up. And as horrible as those stories are, I think that it is something that we can be grateful for. As horrible as it would be for somebody like that, and you know that we talk about these stories all the time, to lose their business or to lose their livelihood, to lose their house, to lose financial stability, all of these things. When we're looking at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're talking about their lives. We're talking about a government that just because you wouldn't bow down and worship their God and renounce your own, would burn you to death in a furnace. And so because of that, I really think that we have to keep into perspective that even though we're facing this kind of persecution, and it is, it is horrible, but it's inevitable, that we're actually the lucky ones. Because at least as of yet, there's really nobody in this country calling for Christians to be burned alive because they refuse to bow down to the God of political correctness and secularism. Now that may come one day, but it's not now. But even if it does, we as Christians have to have the moral conviction of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that when the Chaldeans come and they tattle to those in authority and try to get us into trouble and try to undermine us, that our faith remains strong and we do not but we do not give in to that. Because here's the thing. You notice something about the Chaldeans? Why would they go to the king if they knew that these men were just going to fold and cave and go and worship anyway? If they knew that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that as soon as the king snapped his fingers and took notice, they said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll go down and worship. We'll make it okay. See, if they thought they would have done that, they would have never brought this to the king's attention. The reason that they brought it to his attention is actually kind of a compliment to them because they knew that these men were strong enough in their convictions that they would refuse to worship this idol. And so in a roundabout way, they actually kind of paid them a compliment because they understood that their conviction to God was so strong that even if it meant the risk of their own life, that they would not deny their God. 
those are some people that we can look to as an inspiration. That even when we do face these kinds of persecutions and people not liking us and all these other things, that they, even to the point of death, were willing to obey God. It's the kind of conviction that, if ever tested, I would like to think that I would have. I don't know if I'm spiritually mature enough to say that yet, and you never know how you're going to react until it actually happens to you. But this is something that each of us should look to as a goal and something to inspire us to be better than we are now. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. What's that? Oh, you want to know what the content's going to be? You want to know what's in it? No, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's in it.